الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع عبده إلى يوم الدين قال المصنف رحمه الله الإمام البخاري في كتاب الأدب المفرم شفت السبنتي ون باب الكرم الكرم هي in Arabic has a number of meanings what we're talking about here the karam which means the nobility we will recite the hadith not which we will elaborate if there is need or a need to elaborate now chapter 71 nobility hadith 129 Abu Huraira says the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked which people are the most noble? He replied, the most noble of them with Allah are those with the most taqwa. They said, that is not what we are asking about. He said, the most noble of people was Yusuf, the Prophet of Allah, son of Ya'qub, the Prophet of Allah, who was the son of Ishaq, the Prophet of Allah, the son of Ibrahim, the intimate friend of Allah, peace be upon them all. They said, this is not what we were asking about. He said, are you asking about those of Arab origin? They said, yes. He said, the best of you in the time of ignorance is the best of you in Islam if you have true insight of religion. May I be allowed for them in the Lakhon Yud, the Fella Hadi Lahu, and Shuban Layla in the law, and the Ula Sharika Lahu, and Shuban Muhammad and Abdu Wasu. Am I back? But in Asa of Hadi, he got a lot of Asa and Hadi and Muhammad and Sopa, and he was seven. When you show the moon, he had to have a cool and better in Bida, a cool and better in Bola, a cool and Bola in Fina. Before we start, we just make this announcement. In two weeks, you know that the clock would go forward one hour. So our class will be straight after Maghrib, inshallah. So the Maghrib will be round about 25 or 30 past 7. It's half past 7. So when we finish the Maghrib, it's about 10 to 8. That's where the time will be starting our class for next week. So from two weeks, sorry. So two weeks time, that's the clock going forward one hour. We're going to start straight after the Maghrib. The author, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, he puts in his book, which is a mighty book, the Adab, the Etiquettes, Babukal, the chapter which is to do with nobility, under which he narrates the hadith of Abu Ghayr, and the Prophet Sallallahu was asked by the companions, who amongst the people is the most noble? So the Prophet Sallallahu answered them from the angle of piety, from the angle of, or the perspective of deeds. So he said, this is the ayah. So he said, The best of them, the most noble of them, is the one who has the most piety. And this is in Surah Al-Hujurat. We find the support of that from Allah's Azawajal verse. The most noble amongst you is the one who has the most piety. And this is a said, an answer from the Prophet Sallallahu from the perspective of the deeds and the righteous deeds. Now, the companion here, they asked, this is not what we are asking you, Messenger of Allah. And this is to show the, I would say, the courage of the companions to ask, that is to show that I was not asking about this. So, maybe I did not understand the answer, maybe it is not the answer I was looking for, so no problem that the person will inquire, and this is here an inquiry from the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because maybe it is not the question he was asking for, maybe he did not understand and he needs more clarification, and maybe it is not the right answer for the right question that he wants. So he's asking the Prophet of Allah, I was not asking you about that. So still the same question, same question, who is the most noble amongst the people? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi straight away had answered, فَأَكْرَمُ nas that is, أَكْرَمُ nas the most noble amongst the people, الْكَرِيمُ ibn الْكَرِيمُ ibn الْكَرِيمُ that is, الْكَرِيمُ ibn الْكَرِيمُ ibn الْكَرِيمُ the most noble, the son of the most noble, the son of the most noble. In another narration, he is Yusuf alayhi salam, 
the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet, that is Ishaq, the son of the Prophet, sorry, the son of the Prophet Ya'qub, the son of the Prophet Ishaq, the son of the Prophet Khayrullah, the close companion of Allah, that is Ibrahim alayhi salam. So here, the Prophet sallam had answered this question from the perspective of the lineage. Because the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he has the most noble lineage. He is a Prophet, son of a Prophet, son of a Prophet, son of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who is Khalilullah azza wa jal. Now they said, Messenger of Allah, this is not what we are asking you about. So here again, the companions was more clarification. It is not that what they are asking about. So now he said, and he wants to clarify what they are asking about. He said, are you asking me about the ma'adin? Ma'adin in Arabic, ma'adin, ma'adin means metal. But actually it's the core of the metal. It means the essence of the metal. So the origin. So it's, are you asking me about the origin of the Arabs? The most noble amongst the origin of the Arabs? Are that what you asking me about? They said, yes, Messenger of Allah. That's the question. So the Prophet he said, فَخِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ The best of you in the Jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic time, is خِيَارُكُمْ فِي Islam, The best of you in Islam. And إِذَا فَقِهُ Or إِذَا فَقُهُ فَقِهُ means they have gained an insight, knowledge and religion. And فَقُهُ means they came فُقَهَا So فَخِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ خِيَارُكُمْ فِي Islam. It means those who are the ones that they would combine between a noble lineage and also a good deed between the de the action and between the knowledge and the religion those are the best and those are the most noble so companions are asking about the true genuine or the the the, uh, the the true nobility what is the true nobility prophet of allah is saying that if you combine between taqwa and uh, as well the lineage and also between the knowledge and the as well the action the knowledge here is from the religion then you are the most noble so khiyarukum fil islam khiyarukum fil jahiliyyah khiyarukum fil islam ida faqih so the best of the companions who had combined between the nobility of his lineage and also the nobility of his taqwa because the taqwa itself the iman that is as well with the knowledge of religion <coughs> in which we have learned here as well that the nobility in the lineage is good because remember that the lineage of its noble it will affect the descendants and that is why when we remember the hadith or we talked about which is the hadith of Sahih Juwaj the three children who spoke in the cradle and in this book he was talking about two people spoke in the cradle and then he mentioned Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet sallam, who spoke in the cradle. We said Isa alayhi salam story in which he had a miraculous birth and also a miraculous creation. In that miraculous birth, if you remember, in Surat Maryam, when Maryam alayhi salam, she brought the baby in her arm, those people who are her tribes, they're looking at the baby and they are astonished because how can she have a baby? unless she's been doing something which is unchaste. So they said to her, Ya ukhta Harun, ma kana aruki mura'a sawin wa ma kana umuki bagheer. That is, your sister of Harun, your righteous man, is Harun name. So you belong to a righteous family. So your father was not a fornicator. He was not unchaste, nor your mother was. So here, there's a hint here from these people that if you are having a father who is bad, that is fornicating, and a mother who is fornicating, you are about to affect your lineage. Your lineage will become fornicators. Your, your children will become fornicators. So you don't come from a, a lineage which are known to be fornicators. So that's what I told her. And that's what she said. And <coughs> she pointed to him and then they said, how can we speak to somebody who was in the cradle? And the story goes on when he had said, to the end of the verses. So here we the find that the noble lineage is important that the noble lineage is a lineage i'm not talking about richness i'm talking about the lineage of that this person is coming from a great lineage who is known to be pious known to be having legitimate relationship and that is why the prophet he was boasting he said 
ولم اتي من سفاح من لدن ادم الى الساعه. That I came from a proper marriage, not from any fornication, from the time of Adam alayhi salam until my birth. And nobody can say that except for the Prophet. Prophet is being told by the Almighty that he came from what? A noble lineage. He came all the way down to him, that is, through Nikah. No illegitimate relationship had taken place. You can't say that about yourself. Maybe you could just say about four, five, or six grandfathers, but you can't go further than that. You don't know what is happening, how you came about. So the Prophet of Allah, he was boasting about his lineage, that he came from Nikah, he did not come through Sifa. Brothers, the back, can you come forward, please? Just like Allah, please fulfill. The Prophet Sallallahu requirement when you sit in a, you know, in a class of knowledge, don't leave gaps. Believe me, the gaps will affect your hearts. The ones at the back, even with the chest, come forward. Shukumullah, come forward. forward. Chapter 72, Hadith <coughs> 130. Chapter 72, of fair recompense for both the observant and the erring. Hadith 130, Athar 34, Muhammad bin Ali ibn Abu ibn al-Hanafi. Ibn al-Hanafi. Muhammad ibn Ali ibn al-Hanafi, yeah, that is, he is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, but not from Fatima. Said not Abu from Asma. He is from a slave. <coughs> a slave, she's not a wife to Ali ibn Abi Talib. So he's Muhammad ibn Ali, and he was a well-known person for his piety. So he says, Regarding the verse, he said about the verse, Hal jazaw ihsan illa ihsan. Which translation of which? Translation is, Can the repayment of goodness be other than goodness? He said, If the Hanafiya said, Goodness is for both the observant and the erring. Right. So here, the chapter is very linked to that athar from Muhammad. This chapter is talks about being kind. Kindness, regardless to whom you're being kind, whether to the person who is righteous, which is you know understood, and even to the person who is corrupt. We add to it as well, whether it is a kafir or whether it is a Muslim, you're being kind. And I'll tell you what, whether it's the human being or even to that animal. For brother, for the for the Prophet Sallam, he said, In Allah Allah had ordained for you that you should be kind in everything. Hatta, even when you are slaughtering your animal, you have to be kind. How can I be kind to slaughter an animal? Number one, I sharpen the knife. So I'm not going to really torture her while I'm killing her. Number two, I will not kill an animal in front of another animal. That's from the ihsan, from being kind. <coughs> because if you kill an animal in front of another animal, you are killing her twice. That animal is looking and he's seeing you killing her sister. Or the same thing when you drag her to the killing place, you drag her in a way which is a soft way, a calm way. You're not playing karate with her, for example. So you bring in her properly. And as the Prophet ﷺ told that companion, سُقْحَ إِلَى الْمَوْتِ سَوْقًا جَمِيلًا Take her to the death, to the killing, in a nice way, in a soft way. Prophet ﷺ was told by that companion, Messenger of Allah, إِنِّي لَأَذْبَحُ الشَّاكُ وَإِنِّي لَأَرْحَمُهَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ لَقَدْ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهُ وَيَرَحْمَتِكَ لَهَا that is, Prophet of Allah was asked, he was asked by, or was being told by this man, he said, Messenger of Allah, I'm <coughs> slaughtering the animal, I have mercy in my heart, as I'm slaughtering the animal. So he says, verily Allah Azza wa will have mercy upon you, and had a mercy upon you, just because you had mercy when you are killing the animal. So Al-Ihsan, there is no differentiation. You cannot differentiate between a believer or a disbeliever, between a person who's righteous or a person who's not righteous. You have to be kind to every person. This ayah is for every person, regardless of his background. And I would say maybe for the unrighteous, you would be more kind in order to drag him to be what? A righteous. So that is, we say that the person was, for example, a father, <coughs> and has got two children. One son is obedient, and the other one is disobedient. Usually this is the case the father who would deprive the disobedient from his inheritance. He will deprive him from any sort of giving. We say this supposedly the other way around. <laughs> You're not allowed to deprive that person in the first place, but if I want to give more, I will give to the one which what? It's obedient. So he might become obedient. 
But if you're going to be now uh, not being fair in the way that you give to those sons because of their righteousness to you, you have increased in the unrighteousness of that person who is unrighteous already. Because that one who is the child of the son who is unrighteous to you, if you're going to deprive him from his rights, if you're going to separate and you know give more money to the one who is righteous, then that one who is not righteous, he will say, well, my father deserves my tough and rough way of dealing with him because he's not you know fair and just with me. So as Sheikh al Ibn al used to say, if it was the case to give more, we would give to the what? To the one who is disobedient, the insolent child, rather than the one who is because the one who is righteous is righteous. Right, from uh, this chapter, as I said, we go to another chapter, chapter 73 and Hadith 131. Chapter 73, the virtue of providing for orphans. Hadith 131. Abu Huraira said, the Prophet وسلم, said, the person who strives on behalf of the widows and the poor it's like those who do jihad in the way of Allah and like those who fast in the day and pray at night. Right, the ones who looks after the widows. Now widows here, an English word of translation of one meaning of the word armala in Arabic. Widow is the one whom her husband died, thrown up. But armala in Arabic is not just that. It means as well the woman who has no husband. So whether her husband died, she had a husband, or she did not have a husband, I mean she did not get married, she's called Armala, and Armala is from the Irman. Irman means the Fakr. Fakr means which is poverty. So usually is the case when the husband is not there, the women are not are capable of supporting themselves. And that is why they are to be dependent upon the men. This is of course in a healthy state. But we find now these single mothers these days are richer than the ones who are with their husbands. Unfortunately, the being given so much uh, uh, support from the state, okay, that make them so much independent that would cause them to split the family because she doesn't care. So she doesn't mind, for example, putting the family and go somewhere else because she's already has a support. It's not the husband, but actually the state. So we say. The state should give a support to the one who deserves support. For example, she's been left by her husband. But to give her something to make her rebellious, and to make her to say, well, I'm going to care about you, whether you spend upon me or not, I've got my money. That's not right. So we say that the Arumala is in Arabic, the one who has no husband or had a husband and died. And it is from the word Irmal, and it is from the Fakr, which is the poverty. And this is the poverty due to the husband is not there to support her. So he says, a sir, the one who looks after, a sir, the one who goes and comes. That is, in order to benefit the person. So it is a sir, going, going, going forward and backwards for the sake of looking after this woman who's got no husband or husband died. Or the masakin. Masakin is a plural of miskin, is the one who's got nothing. And miskin also in Arabic means the one who is weak. Miskin in Arabic is the one who is humble. The miskin is the one who is humiliated. <laughs> Lots of meanings for the word miskin. But miskin here it means miskin is the poor person, the one who has nothing. It is not the one who is, uh, uh, for example, he is uh, a humble person. Because when Pro Prophet Sallallahu he said, Allahumma ahini miskina wa amitni miskina wa ahshurni fi zumratil masakin. And this is what calls a a dilemma for some of the people who don't understand the words and cannot really, uh, you know, arbitrate between the hadith and reconcile. So here, the hadith says, Prophet said, Oh Allah, make me to live as a miskin and to die as a miskin and to be some and to be resurrected amongst the masakin. Miskin could be translated wrongly into English, and even the Arab would think that means, Oh Allah, make me to live as a poor, die as a poor, and be resurrected among the poor people. Whereas this is not the right translation. Because the Prophet ﷺ himself, he had sought refuge in Allah from poverty in every single prayer of his. So every time you pray for Allah, you will give him a fuck. So how can you seek refuge from the poverty? And at the same time, Prophet of Allah is asking to be with the poor, live as a poor, die as a poor, brother among the poor. So it can't be. So that is why, as I said, if the person doesn't understand how to reconcile, he'll end up uh, either that not accepting the hadith or maybe saying that the religion is okay contradicting one each other so it is not the case 
miskeen hiya in that hadith of the Prophet of Allah. It means, oh Allah, make me to live as a humble. That is a humble, resurrected among, <coughs> amongst the humble. Humble, submitted, submissive, and so on and so forth. Right, so here, the one miskeen means here the poor. And it could include as well the weak. The one who's looking after the weak, but most likely it is. The poor means that the one who is poor, so he's financially skinned, he's got no money, the person is looking after it. Kal mujahideen afi sabillah. Kafiyah lit tashreeh, which is lack. Kaf, kaf. Kal mujahideen, like the mujahid, fi sabillah. It is not a mujahid fi sabillah. Always in our way. When the, the similarity has been given, that this is just like this, it is not as equal. Remember that. So when he said, Kal mujahideen is not a mujahid is higher. But he's almost there. It's almost there. I'm going to see a hadith later on. I am and the one who looks after the car, the child, the orphan, just like this. But you're not going to be like the Prophet of Allah. No way. You can't be like this with the Prophet of Allah. But this is to show that you're almost there. And then he says, Mujahid. When you say Mujahid, it means Mujahid means fighting for the sake of Allah. When it says Mujahid is different. So Mujahid means what? Fighting. Because jihad it could be jihad nafs. That means you're asking, sorry, you're fighting wounds and desire. It's not meant here. A person <coughs> is fighting the shaitan. It is not the one who's meant here. The mujahidiyah means, we say, means what? Fighting for the sake of Allah. It is like the one who is fasting the whole day and praying the whole night. In the hadith, like the one who is in prayer all night, does not stop, not stopping. And like the one who fasts forever, does not break his fast. Still, he's not as good as him. So we have the Mujahid, who's amongst them is the highest, the Mujahid. The second one, the one who fasts and the one who prays. And then the one who is looking after the Arman, the one who is the husband, and the Miskeen who is the poor person. So the third one is the first one. So in rank, the best one is the Mujahid. Because he said, Kal Mujahid. And then, Wa Kal Lari. So, Kal, the one which is fasting and praying is not a black Mujahid. And that is why Prophet Sallallahu was asked by a companion, the Messenger of Allah, what is the best of these? He said, Jihad al Fi Sabiillah. To fight for the sake of Allah. He said, What about another one? He said, La Ajidu I can't fight like it. So, he, this man, he wants something else. I can't find like it. Professor, I can't find like if you want the same. He said, well, then if you are able to go to the masjid, once the mujahid goes to the jihad, left, pray non-stopping, fast non-stopping until he comes back, then it will be the same. Can you do that? It means impossible. Non-stopping prayer until that mujahid is amongst two months jihad and he's still two months praying. No food. No drink, just one stop. It means impossible to find the, the, the similar, uh, uh, you could say, equivalent of the reward of Mujahid in Sabirullah. But we try to be the best. So the person who comes to jihad, at least he could just make fast. If he can't do fast, he could make, for example, Qiyam. Come, come, make Qiyam, look after with your money uh, on a person who is a widow, that is, lost a husband, or whether she has no husband, and she has no parents, no family to look after her, so you're feeding her, you're looking after her, also the masakeen, the poor people. So you are the one who's after the Jannah. And Jannah Arduha Samawati wal Ar. Huh? Arduha Samawati wal Ar. This is the Jannah paradise, whom the root of it is like the heavens on earth. If you are after this Jannah, and Allah's Messenger is showing you the way, why don't you do it then? To find yourself and Armana, lots of them these days, especially in Syria, lots of women have lost their husbands, lost their children. So you find one and look after her, means spend money, you just send money to the people will be, you know, uh, uh, buying her food and expenses and so on and so forth. So this is, you're going to get as close as possible to the Mujahid because to be a jihad these days is almost impossible. There is no way we're doing jihad and jihad. I'm not saying jihad is not there. Uh, actually, you know, it's not going to be open, but I'm just saying, where is the proper jihad these days? It's very hard to find it. So if it is the case, at least you will do the same, just to look after that orphan, sorry, look after that widow, or look after that woman you call no husband, or look after that person who is poor, Allah Ta'ala, and 
the companions, once they hear about Jannah, they leave everything. It just come to my mind now the story of uh, Umayr ibn Hamam, one of the companions in the Battle of Badr. When the Prophet وسلم, he was preparing everybody for the battle, and he said to the companions, Gone to Jannah, Arduha Samawati wal Ard. Jannah, Arduha Samawati wal Ard means the width of it is like heavens and earth. So, Ahmad Muhammad said, Verily, if I'm gonna do it, so he said, Arduha Samawati, Bakhin Bakhin, Arabic, Bakhin Bakhin, means, wow, mashallah, Bakhin Bakhin. So he said, Why do you say Bakhin Bakhin? So Ahmad Muhammad said, Verily, Messenger of Allah, I want to be one of the inhabitants of paradise. He said, You are one of them. As soon as you have one of them, he was eating dates. He said, it's too long life for me to eat these dates. He left it <laughs> and he tried to eat it and he, and he was martyred. It's too, too long for me to eat these dates. He left them uh, and straight away, he fights and he dies for the sake of Allah. That's a hadith sahih. So these are the companions are really the true genuine people who are looking after paradise. Talking about ourselves, Allah al-Musta'an. Allahumma amilna bi rahmatika wa bi fadlik wa la tu amilna bi abdik Allah. Right, Father. 65, sorry, 74, hadith 132. Chapter 74, the virtue of providing for one's orphans. Hadith 132. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, said, A woman came to me with two of her daughters. She asked me for something, but I could not find anything except for a single date, which I gave to her. She divided divided it between her two daughters and then got up and left. When the Prophet وسلم, came in and I told him what had happened, he said, for whoever looks after these girls in any way and is good to them, they will be availed for him from the fire. Right. First of all, this is hadith. If I want to ask the brothers, where is the link between it and between the title? Can you read the title, please? The virtue of providing for one's orphans. The word orphan is not mentioned in the hadith or so on. So I want you now to give me the link after we explain the hadith. A woman, she came, by this way, the hadith is repeated in the Labad al Mufar a number of times. You'll find it again when the Aisha, the Allah, she would ask the Prophet, and said, You know, I was amazed about this mother. She came and looks, she's a poor woman. So she did not, so she came, she asked me. She asked me and she begged. So she did not find except with me, except for one date. So the only thing that shows you number one, the Prophet Sallallahu house. He is the head of the state and he is the Prophet of Allah. In his most beloved uh, house, or this Aisha's house, he's got only one date. So they, those people are worried. You know, about the next month's shopping. Uh, not this day, next month's shopping. What are we going to be shopping for the next month? And she had only one date. So she gave it to her, that date. And remember, the houses of the Prophet always have dates. Because the Prophet of Allah he said, Have you got no dates? The inhabitants of the house are to be hungry. Baytun, they said, Come home, ahluhu jia. They are hungry. Have dates. This is very good. So she gave her the one date. Now she's amazed now. That woman, she's having two daughters. So what she did, she did not eat anything. Chose her the mother. Her mother. She had split it in two halves between the two girls of hers. He told he two daughters. So this is amazing. And when the Prophet Sallam came, after the woman she left, she told him Aisha. And the other hadith, which is the other narration, she said. He said to her, are you amazed because of her mercy to her daughters? For what Allah is more merciful than her to her daughters to us. Allah is more merciful to us. So she split it in two halves. And the other hadith says he, she, she had been given her three dates. So the mother, she gave one date to the one girl, the other date to the other girl, and she had the date in her hand. The two little girls said, away, they swallowed their dates. And then they looked at the date of their mother. So they already had their share and they looked at the date of the mother. So the mother, she can't take it. Put it in two arms. She gives it to each daughter. 
after they had a baby. She was the mother, and the mother is the most closest person to you and should be more closer than yourself, more closer than your children, more closer than your wife, especially the wife. For those who, for example, take their family in a picnic or a trip, he puts the wife on the front and the mother on the back, you have no shame. You have no manners. Mother goes in the front, unless she wants to ask to go to the back because of health wise, but she has to go to the front and the wife goes to the back. Fortunately, people now, they put the dog in the front, everybody. <laughs> True or not? <laughs> the dog is in the front. The mother in the old house age, you know, the old, old house, the old age house. Right, so the mother you have to look after. And that is why the mother, Prophet you know, when you're looking at this hadith, so thinking about it, the hadith which says, Three supplications are to be fulfilled. No doubt about them. What does that mean? That means they will be fulfilled. The supplication of the uh, oppressed, the one who's been unjustly dealt with, and da'wah to musafir, the traveler, supplication. And the third da'wah is the da'wah al warid ala wali. First of all, the madloom, that means the one who makes a dua against his zalim, oh Allah, you know, get my life out of him. Or to the person who had helped him to lift off this oppression, he would as well make dua for him. As for the musafir, because close to Allah, dua for himself, dua for his family together, oh Allah, make this trip is easy, it will be fulfilled. The third one, dua al walad al walid ala walid. Now the Prophet said the supplication of the father against his son. Another relation to his son. But why didn't he say the Prophet al walid? And we know through the hadith of the Prophet who is closer to the person, the father or the mother, three times the mother, the father one time. The ratio one to three. <coughs> In terms of inheritance. Usually it is the case the father will take more. Two or not, not the mother. They might be together the same, but the father will take more. He can't, you know, no way the mother will take more than the father. In inheritance, if you die. But because this is because of the male. The male are the ones who are, you know, doing expenses, not the female. So it was the male will take more. So the father, why the supplication of the father against his son? They say, well, the scholars, it's the, the mother is included because when you say the father, the mother is closer. But also there is something there that the mother usually does not supplicate against her son. The mother does not do that. The father does. See, the mother, if you remember the story of Juraj, and how is he calling his mother? So his mother was calling while he was praying. Juraj, and he's thinking that. And remember, he is in a hermitage. You know, hermitage, they build it in the desert. So the mother is leaving her house, going all the way, it's a long way. And she finds him praying, and it's a voluntary prayer. You're right, she said, oh, well, let me go with my prayer. He did not answer her. He was saying to Allah, shall I answer him? Three times. Now, if it was the father, what did she supplicate for the third one? She said, oh Allah, don't make your life to die until you make him see the faces of what? Of the hardest or the unchaste woman. If it was the father, what is it? May Allah kill him. May Allah cut him into pieces. He does not answer me. The father said he's enraged. Draw him out. Don't tell me you're a nice father. <laughs> the father loses his temper. Straight away. He can't hold himself. Hey, God, and he won't go to bang you. <laughs> but the mother. And the prophet said, he said, If she had supplicated, made a supplication, that him to go into the fitna, the fitna of that means fornicating. Allah will fulfill her, her supplication and he will fornicate. But she said, Oh Allah, let me do that until he sees the faces. Not just oh. Look at that, even that she was enraged three times, but the maximum she said, Oh Allah, don't make him to die until he sees the faces of that unchaste woman. He did not say until he fornicates, because if she said so, Allah will fulfill it, even if it's a sin. Just to show you. And this is a supplication of whom? Of a mother against whom? Somebody's a worshipper. And what is he doing? A worship. How about a person who's watching TV and he is very, very corrupted person. His mother is calling him. Let me watch, mother. Get away from me. So that supplication of the mother against that one will straight away will hit him. 
Because that mother should suffer again against a righteous man. And he was in a ibadah, trauma. But this person is, A'udhu Billah, he is being unbeatable his mother because he is not righteous himself and not even doing a righteous act while his mother is calling him. Coming back to the hadith. This is the mother. She is splitting the two dates. It shows you the mother's mercy to her. She would not eat herself even if she's hungry. She would give half of the date to one of the daughter and half of it. I understand as well, this, the two daughters are not twins. But the half date is not going to be, for example, uh, makes a difference. So she was even in that just, she split it into halves because they are almost equal age. But they're not the same as twins. But if you find, for example, that you have one daughter, let's say or one son, 10 years old, and one which is three months old or one year old, uh, and you've been given two apples, you can't just say I have to be just one apple for the baby and one apple for the big guy. No, that baby will take what? A portion of the apple, no problem. So you'll be just as well if you give him an apple and a half for that one who is older. So the Prophet is giving a black tiny for those who have girls. Those people got girls, they're always moaning. I've got always girls, girls. My wife is not strong enough to give me boys. Huh? She's not strong enough to deliver boys for me. Look at that. When you have girls, you have to be happy. He who does look after those girls. Yeri. Yeri means he looks after them and needs to be kind to them. He makes them to be girls who are righteous. Then he has guaranteed that he will not be going to the hellfire. It will be like a barrier, like a screen. So after this, what is the link between this hadith and between the chapter title, which is to do with the orphan. Now, and by the way, I'm not asking you to say that this is a question is only you cannot answer, even scholars. They say, well, we don't know the link. We have to really you know, improvise. What is the link? Because Imam Bukhari says his brain, subhanAllah, the computer. So what is that link? Put your finger up, yalla. Yeah, yeah, do you have something to have cool air, please? You know, we are really boiling here. If somebody open the window, please, if you don't mind, because I'm really hot, and hot brings, you know, slumber. It's hot, hot, I want air. And if we have some fans, for example. Today is really warm today, mashallah, very nice weather. <laughs> okay. Okay, right, what is the link? Anybody? Follow. Perhaps the two daughters didn't have a father, so they were into the new The two daughters have no father. That's a good link. That means when she brought the two girls, that they have no father because the mother, she's the one who's begging. If she had a husband, he would be the one who would be asking for that. He would be the one who's working to give them. So that's a, a link, which is, you know, obviously. And it's as well, there's another link that is, he who does this with the yatim, with an orphan, and to be kind to him, he will get the same reward in terms of that he will be a, will be a screen for him from the helper. So that is obviously, like Allah Hiram, these two girls may be not having a father, but the, uh, the more the powerful link is that if you do this to the girls, even if they are having a father, if you do it to somebody's orphan, you will guarantee that it is going to be a screen against the helper. Is that okay? That's a more, <coughs> a more powerful link. Chapter 75 and hadith number 133. Chapter 75. The virtue of providing for an orphan. Chapter for providing for an orphan. The virtue of providing for an orphan. That's it? No. Among this file is parents, supposedly. By the other way. Let me just see the other manuscript of that. Hmm. Now, this one is actually who.
this chapter is actually because you are this one is exactly as what was before, isn't it? So look at that. So repeating the so the third one is different. You see me? So there's a mistake there. Seventy five is to add amongst the spirits. Now. Hadith 133. Mura al Fihri said, The Prophet وسلم, said, I and the guardian of the orphan are in the garden like these two, or as this one is to this, to this one. <coughs> the narrator said, Sufyan was unsure whether the middle finger and the forefinger were meant. Right. In the Raha, which is Hadith Sahil ibn Sa'ad, it actually emphasizes it. it is actually the sababa or musabbiha they call it makes tasbih or sababa and the sababa means that you insult the shaitan with it because when you do like this you are insulting the shaitan sababa or musabbiha but you make tasbih with it subhanallah subhanallah so musabbiha and the taliha the one which is the middle one so the prophet sallallahu he said ana wa kafir yateen fil jannati kahatay I'm and I the one who is looking after having the custody of the yateen which is the oven like this kahal so but between this and that now Sufyan when he is not sure to show you how precision those companions are to make sure that which finger the Prophet had pointed this is the precision of the conveying of them because they want he's not sure but we have it from a different narration that it is actually like that that means there is no difference there's no middle finger that's how close you are from the Prophet of Allah and also in lengthwise, you know, there is no difference between in the length between the middle finger and between the index. So this hadith, the link of it, between this link and between the chapter title, is that anybody? Right. It means that the kafala, which is the custody, that it's always entailed that the person looks after and always, you know, making sure that is this person being looked after. So this one is not going to be uh, different from the uh, parents looking after the, you know, the person. So when you are having your parents, your parents all the time are looking after you. The same thing that you are looking after the orphan, that you are being his parents. That's what the link between the chapter and the hadith. This shows as well the immaculate reward that you're going to get, that you're going to be like this with the Prophet of Allah. But are you going to be in the same position of the Prophet of Allah? Are you going to be in the Maqam al Mahmud? Oh, same thing that I said to you. the like, like, and the like, you can't be the same. Or alls, same thing here. You can't be like in the same position of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But it means actually you are doing something great that you will be closer. So the more good deeds you do, the more closer you are from the Prophet of Allah. Remember, Prophet of Allah is in Jannah, and when you enter in Jannah, inshallah, you'll be in Jannah. The person who gets the minimum reward is going to be in Jannah. Two or not. The person got the, the least of the deeds is going to be in Jannah. He's still with the Prophet of Allah, yes? But how far is from the Prophet of Allah? It is Jannah. Okay? It's like you are in the UK, huh? One person is in Scotland and one person in the UK, uh, in, in England, uh, in, in London. The both of them are in the UK, but the difference is what? Huge. Same, uh, not the same. Similar, just to think about it. You are in Jannah, the Prophet of Allah is in Jannah, but between you and him, Far ah, distance. The greater deed that you do, the closer you get to the Prophet of Allah. But no matter how much you do, you will never be able to gain the position that the Prophet of Allah being promised and Maqam al Mahmud, which we ask Allah to grant it to the Messenger of Allah every time we hear the Adhan. Maqam al Mahmud al Stop here. And next week we will continue. Uh, by the way, 135 is the same. By the way, just to make sure, 130. Four, we have 134, and that is un unauthentic. Put unauthentic. 135 is the same, so no explanation for that. 136 is an athar from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he would all the time have somebody in his uh, food and meal, somebody who's an orphan. So all every time he eats, He's got what? An orphan to eat with him. To make sure that he gets the reward. Look at that. How the companions are eager to fulfill the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Even though they have been promised Jannah. Allah Mas'ud Mas'ud the companions promised Jannah. Right. 
stop here inshallah as I said next week chapter no, sorry two weeks time chapter what 77 all right 77 hadith 138 137 is to be unauthentic so we've got 137 is unauthentic And 134 is unauthentic. Okay. 